Hi. It's me, Pastor Mark. And for Christian Enrichment, I thought, let's do something different. We only have a couple more weeks of school. And I was thinking, why don't I take you on a walk? Because, I don't know, how many times do you go, if you go on a walk, raise your hand. Some of you walk your dogs. Some of you go with, on a walk with your family every single day. And uh, some of you never ever go on walks. Well, look at my walk. It's a beautiful day. I'm not far from the school, but I'm outside. And I have, uh, there's no one around me, so I'm got my mask off and I was thinking I love to go for walks especially by myself because when I go on walks I'm all by myself and all I do is think I really like to go on runs but I twisted my ankle playing volleyball with the kids a few weeks ago and so I'm uh, not able to run which is kind of good because I don't think I could do this and run at the same time. Someone behind me? Oh, there's no one behind me yet. I haven't seen any people out on my walk yet. I like to think about when Jesus used to go on walks because he actually only went on walks. He had no one else. He had no way else to walk. I think about like, except for when Mary and Joseph went and took Jesus to Bethlehem and they were on a donkey. But how often do we just go out in the middle of nowhere and, oh, look at this. Who is this? Going for a walk. I think that the reason we walk. I mean, some of you go on, you run, you run it out at recess, or you run when you're with uh, Mr. Dennis, or you run when you're out on the playground, but how often do we go on walks? Now, I don't suggest you go on a walk by yourself where you can't see your parents. It's very important that you always can see your parents when you go for a walk. But I think that there was this time in the Bible after Jesus was baptized by his cousin John and he, uh, he went out all by himself for 40 days and 40 nights. Ooh, it's a little windy. I hope it doesn't make a lot of noise in the video. Do you think it will? It might make a lot of noise, in the, like the wind, you know, like... Can you make a good wind noise? But when you're on a walk, you look at things around you and then all of a sudden you think, hmm, God, can you hear me right now? So you like, talk to God. That's what I do when I'm on walks, I talk to God. I say, God, Thanks for giving me everything I have. Thanks for giving me an opportunity to go on a walk. Thanks for giving me an opportunity to be, to live in Orange County. Thank you for my family. And then all of a sudden I think, wow, I'm praying. I'm praying. But I didn't like intentionally pray. I just kind of accidentally prayed because that's why I need walks to help me remember to pray. So, ah, sometimes I forget to pray. Can you believe that? Sometimes I forget to pray. I don't forget to play. I don't forget to don't forget to eat. I don't forget to sleep. I don't forget to you know, do my chores. I mean, sometimes I do. 
Sometimes I forget to take out trash. Woo! Trash gets smelly. Sometimes I forget to, I don't know, do certain things that I'm supposed to do. And so I also forget sometimes, oh, it's kind of quiet here. You can hear the birds. Do you hear them? I think they got quiet because I walked by. Morning. Also, when you're on walks, you get chances to say good morning to people. Did you hear I said good morning? I didn't say good morning. I said morning. Because that's, I think, I learned that from my dad. I remember going to church with him when I was a little boy. And we would, on the walk into church, he would look at everyone and say, morning. Never said good morning, just said morning. But I think that's because he from a different part of the country and they, they dropped the good part. They just said morning. Jesus, when he was out on a walk for 40 days after he was baptized, he had a lot of time to think, to think about all the things that people deal with. Yeah, he was, he was given time to think about people that are hungry, people that just want power. Because there's a lot of people in Jesus' time who just wanted power. He was one of those people, you know, that thought about, hi. Okay. Some bikes went by. Oh, here comes some more bikes. Morning. Some people don't say good morning back, but that's okay. I still say morning to everybody I walk by. I don't think we're ever alone. When I go for a walk, I'm alone. Sometimes I go to bed before Mrs. Chapman, my wife, and I'm alone and I'm laying there and I'm thinking, did I remember to pray today? I mean, I thank God, I pray at chapel, I pray at community, I say the Lord's Prayer. I pray um, when we're having family dinner, but if we're not having family dinner, and I'm just by myself. Hello. I don't pray that much. It's important that we pray. It's important that we I change hands because mom got a little tired holding my phone. It's important that we pray and we, we thank God for all the blessings he's given us. So right now, I'm going to ask everybody to think about all the blessings you have. Hello. Good. Oh, he was friendly. He asked, how are you? That was nice. I should have asked him how he was, but he was on a bike. He was going really fast. So let's think about all the blessings we have. If you have a piece of paper and a pencil, you may want to write them down. Blessings of being able to go to St. Mary's. I know it's a blessing for me. I'm so thankful for that. Every single day, I got to hang out with so many people to just make me so happy. How about that? I mean, I'm not always happy. Sometimes, sometimes I'm teaching religion class and you know, there's some kids in middle school and they wanna be a little chatty. And I'm like, hey, you need to stop being chatty. But then they keep being chatty. And I, I don't act like I'm thankful. Do you always act like you're thankful? How can you act like you're thankful? Let's keep making a list of things we're thankful for. Thankful for my family. Thankful for St. Mary's. Thankful for the ability to do exercise. How can you show that you're thankful for the ability to do exercise? It's important. I'm thankful for water. Because we all don't drink enough water. I'm convinced. Especially since... Sometimes I get so busy, I forget to drink water. I know you think, how can you forget to drink water? Well, I can see that I'm getting tired during the day and I'm not really focusing like I should. and I'm not being as attentive as I want to be. I'm not getting as much stuff done. Oh, it's windy. Oh, I hope it's not super windy on the video. 
and I think, oh man, I just need a pick-me-up. And then I think, oh, I haven't drank any water today. Water, man. That is one of those things that just, it just keeps us, keeps us going. My daughter, Natalie, she doesn't really like water. She doesn't like the taste of it. I don't think it really has any taste. She doesn't like tasting it. But we ask her every day, get up, drink a large glass of water. Sometimes she says she has a headache. And we say, you should drink a large glass of water. And when she does, she usually feels better, but it's funny. Because once you drink a large glass of water and you no longer have a headache, you don't ever say, oh man, thanks mom and dad for suggesting that I drink a large glass of water. Because now I don't have a headache. You don't do that. Because if you don't have a headache, you don't thank people for not having a headache. But that's something I think I should write down on my list of things I'm thankful for. That I don't have a headache. It's because I have water. Water is so good for you. I'm thankful for Flick and the food that I get. Now, I know it's a time of COVID, and I know it's not the usual. If you're new to St. Mary's, then this is all you know when it comes to lunches. But before, we could go in and we could pick anything we wanted. And I was... I was so excited about that this year. But then, now I get my lunch in a little container. And you know what? I'm thankful for that. It's not always enough. And sometimes it's too much and I feel bad because I'm not really that hungry. But it's important that we eat food. Food, that's something we're thankful for. Something that Jesus thought about when he was out in the wilderness. He was thinking about bread. He wasn't eating for a long time. Yeah, and he had an opportunity. He had an opportunity to take, he was God, so he could do anything. He could take stones and turn them into bread if he wanted to, but he decided not to. I think, why do you think he decided not to turn those stones into bread? I think it's because he was trying to know what it's like to be hungry. Because being hungry, there's a lot of people in our world that are hungry. A lot of people that don't have enough food, but yet we have enough food. We have enough food to eat. We have more enough food. We have so much food to eat. We're given so much food. We're so blessed. That's something else we should be thankful for. It's food. Right now I'm walking and I'm like, my feet are very comfortable because I've got some real nice vans on. You wanna see? See my vans? They don't make me walk that fast. They make me, uh, they're not like fast running shoes. Hello. They're like slow running shoes. They're not even running shoes at all. They're just kind of walking shoes. If I was running, I'd be wearing running shoes. But think about that. I'm thankful for the shoes that I have. Think about how many shoes I have. Think about how often I'm not thankful. How often we aren't. Hello. How often we aren't thankful for the shoes that we have. Man. We just take for granted all the shoes that we have. I got a lot of shoes. I got so many shoes. Some shoes that are really worn out, but I really like them still. I've got some shoes that I've never even worn before because they were a gift or someone gave them to me. Morning. Man, we gotta be grateful for our shoes. And my my uniform, look, I got my uniform on, I got my St. Mary's shirt, my St. Mary's sweater. I'm thankful for my uniform. It makes it nice because then when I wake up and go to school, I don't have to worry about what I'm gonna wear. I kinda wear the same thing every day. Just like Charlie Brown. Do you know Charlie Brown? Sure you know Charlie Brown, everybody knows Charlie Brown. Charlie Brown, he wears the same thing every single day, every time. Same with Calvin and Hobbes. Do you know who Calvin and Hobbes are? It's a great cartoon. I love Calvin and Hobbes. Morning. I always think, what's the best, what's your favorite cartoon? I know, nowadays, a lot of people watch anime, which is pretty incredible. The artistry and the design and the way that they make, it's pretty amazing. But I was trying to think of my favorite cartoon. When I was little, I'd wake up on Saturday mornings and I'd run downstairs 
and it's 7 a.m. on Saturday mornings on channel, I think it was 13 or 11, because we only had like 13 channels. There was, morning, there was a show called Super Friends. And Super Friends had Superman, Batman, Robin, Wonder Woman, uh, the Green Lantern was there. The Hulk was on it sometimes. And also there was the Wonder Twins. They were a brief stint, but I don't know if you remember the Wonder Twins. There was twins and they had special powers. One could turn into any kind of water they wanted to. And the other one could turn into any animal they wanted to. I always thought, if I had a choice to be a Wonder Twin, would I be a... Would I be the one that turned into water? Because you can make an ice ladder, or you can make an ice rink, or you can make, like, um, snow, or you could be a bucket of water, or you could be all, any, any kind of water you can think of. What are the different types of water? And the other one could be any animal they wanted to be. I think I always lean towards that one because I always thought it'd be fun to be an animal. Any animal I wanted. You would say, super friends. No, su you would say, one or twin powers activate. And then they would touch knuckles. And I think they had special rings on and they would touch each other. They would touch their knuckles. And they would say, form of. And they would say whatever they wanted to turn into. I don't ever remember if they turned back into, I don't know. I'm thankful for cartoons. Whew. Saturday morning, I could watch cartoons. I had like two hours in the morning on Saturdays to watch cartoons. Before anybody woke up, I was always up early. I still am up early every day. I never was able to sleep in. There was a brief stint in college where I could sleep in. I think it's because I stayed up too late. Now, taking a walk and talking, I just ended up somewhere I've never been before. I mean, I know where I am, and I know how to get home, but it's such a beautiful place out here. I don't see anybody, like no one right now. I'll do a little 360 so you can see. There's a bench, I'm gonna sit on the bench. It looks like it's a bike path. There's probably a lot of bikes come down. Whenever I walk on a bike path, I always listen. One time, I was walking on a bike path, a bike path with Ms. Chapman. Look at this. Here's a bench. I'm gonna sit on this bench. Look around, Look around right now. I don't want to make you sick, so I want to go real slow. Look at that. Our school's right up there. One time, I was walking on a path with Mrs. Chapman. Walking was a narrow path, and I heard a click. Click, 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 click. But it sounded like. I think it sounded like a swarm of bees. Have you ever heard a swarm of bees? I, it sounded like a swarm of bees was coming at me. And I was like, ah, the ah, bees, bees. It was just a bicycler, and his bike was going click, 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 click. But he was behind me. But I was all worried, so I started to run. And Mrs. Chapman was like, "It's just a bike." And I said, whoa, I thought it sounded like bees. Bees don't bother me if it's like one. I kind of go, oh, I'm not allergic to bees. If you're allergic to bees, whew, then you'd be really scared if it was a swarm of bees. But if it's just one bee, I always think if I just move out of the way, slowly, calmly, the bee will go away. Sometimes it flies in the car, you know, when the windows are down in the car, and everybody in the car freaks out. I'm like, slowly move the bee outside but it's a swarm of bees because we had in our old house we had a tree out in front and every year a group of bees would come and gather at that tree and like i think they just they all just start swarming there so we always have to call somebody and they would come and take the bees to a to a safer place they would go in they would find the queen take the entire they use smoke to tire them out they promised me it wasn't hurting them and then they would take them somewhere to a beehive where they could make honey I always think that's interesting. I always think about the job I might have. I might be a bee farmer. That'd be so fun. Put on, you know, your, your outfit every day and go out and take the honey and help the bees so they get healthier and healthier. Oh, 
That would be so fun. But then I'd be alone all the time. I mean, with the bees. But I really like people. I like to be around people. Which, if you ever go for a walk, make sure that you go with someone. But make sure you can see your parents. My family used to walk a lot. But now my wife and I walk every single morning. We walk the dog. We walk the dog so the dog can do its business, you know. But I don't think that... Uh, it's not really so the dog can do his business because Gertie, she could go in the backyard and do her business. It's more so my wife and I, we can walk and talk, which is kind of like what we're doing today. You and I, we're walking and talking. I know, I'm doing all the talking here, just sitting there listening, but it's neat. So have you made your list? Have you made your list of things you're grateful for? Because right now, my list is so long. I'm so grateful for just being able to go to school, when so many kids in the United States haven't been able to go to school because of the COVID. And then I'm excited that we, I'm not wearing a mask outside because I've, I've been vaccinated. And I'm so excited about that because now I don't have to be vaccinated. I mean, I don't have to. In fact, other than school, you know, when I'm inside with somebody else who's vaccinated, I don't have to wear a mask. I'm thankful for my parents because they're healthy. I'm thankful for my, my, my daughters. I'm thankful for my car because it drove me down the street here to this walk that I went on with you. This is a good day for a walk. I'm going to just turn the camera and I need you to listen. Oh, here comes car. Oh, it's one of the people who like work out here on the walk area. Well, I hope you made your list of things you're grateful for. And I think that the reason that Jesus was by himself in the wilderness for 40 days was to experience things that we experience. That's why I love talking to Jesus about my problems when I'm lonely, when I'm sad, when I'm happy, when I'm thankful, when I'm sad that I will actually wasn't being thankful like I wasn't being thankful for my food but I get food every single day I wasn't being thankful for my shoes but my shoes protect my feet and I think about all the kids in the world that don't have food and all the kids in the world that don't have any shoes it makes me sad but then I'm happy because I have shoes but then I'm sad because they don't have shoes but I wonder if they're sad you know there's been many times in my life where I have gone to a place in the world where kids don't have the same things that I have. And yet they're very, very happy. Isn't that interesting? Have you ever thought about that? When you go to a place where people don't have as much as you have, and yet they come across like they're really happy. In fact, I genuinely think they're really, really happy, even though they don't have as much as I have. And then sometimes I think, wow, I wonder if I lived here and I didn't have all that I have, would I still be happy? Or would I be as happy as they are? See, the longer our list of things is that we're thankful for, the more we appreciate everything we have. But if you have a really short list of things you're thankful for, how much more would you appreciate those things? Because if I, if I didn't have any shoes, let's say I live somewhere where I never had shoes. Oh, it's windy. I hope it doesn't make the video all. Can you make a good wind sound? I can't make a good wind sound. I am so thankful. I'm thankful for you. I'm thankful that you and I have a time that we can sit and talk every week. And I pray that this week, or I pray. I said I pray. But I really do. I pray for you every week. I'm in my office and I just say, Lord, would you just be with all the families of St. Mary's? Would you keep them safe and keep them happy and keep them healthy? And, and then sometimes people call me and they say, we're not real happy right now. And I say, oh, how can I pray for you? And then I write it down. I've got this spiral notebook. Actually, I'm like spiral notebook number nine. I think I have a spiral notebook for every year that I've been at St. Mary's. That would be 10. I think this is 11. And I write down that spiral notebook when people say they're not happy and they want me to pray for something. Sometimes God answers it. Sometimes God says, 
boom, right away. They call me up and they say, thank you for praying because now we're happy again because so-and-so was healed or so-and-so was sad and now they're happy or so-and-so, and, -so. and so I write it down. I write it down, but I don't show anybody that because that's very private, very confidential. But it's important that we, that we remember those who aren't happy and we try to make them happy. And you know what? Sometimes when people ask me, hey, would you pray for me on this? And then I put it down on my list of things and I pray for them, I pray for them, I pray for them, I pray for them. And then I come to them later and I say, hey, I was praying for this, how's this going? And they say, oh, that was weeks ago that was okay. Weeks ago, God answered that prayer. And I go, oh, oh, I've been praying for it even though God answered it. What do you think God thinks? Do you think God thinks, ah, oh, Pastor Mark, I answered that prayer a long time ago. You don't have to pray for that anymore. But yet I'm not listening. Or I didn't check in. That's probably it. I need to check in with that person and say, hey, how's it going? Well, I've been talking to you now for a while. And I feel like this has been my first Christian enrichment where it's just been nonstop chatter. Just me and you. I didn't read your story. I told you a couple stories. But um, I want you to really be grateful for things you have. Make that list. Maybe you drew pictures of all the things you're grateful for. And then talk to God. Just talk to God. Sometimes you're in bed alone, asleep at night, or before you go to sleep, and you're like, I can't sleep. I don't want to go to bed yet. Man, I remember that, those days. They're still there, actually. So, nah, not really. When my head hits the pillow, I usually crash out real fast. Well, I want you to have a blessed day and a blessed week. God bless you. Love you. Mean it.